What would it be like to be an assassin in the current day? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues, and I break them down into the digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read automatically back to you all of the to the panel section images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by respective companies. Now, yes, some of you may remember this video from our gaming channel, Eligible Monster, but we've decided to start moving some of these gaming comic books back to the main channel, doing them weekly for you, which includes things like Overwatch, Assassin's Creed, Tomb Raider, because you know what? I'm a huge gamer, and I love these games, and I'd like to get these videos more attention. So, today we're going to bring you Volume 1 of Assassin's Assassin's Creed, one of my all-time favorite games, and oh man, am I excited for this movie. I hope it's not bad. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get started, and very soon we'll be bringing you Volume 2 of this. 1852, California Gold Rush, Great Bassin Desert. A female assassin is chasing after a stagecoach. After launching a grappling hook onto the stagecoach, she jumps on, slashing one man's throat. She then turns to the other man, telling him that he has something that belongs to the people, and that something is gold. The assassin stops and notices something in the distance. She readies her rifle, and she shoots someone off on the horizon. Holy crap, that was sick! Someone on a microphone says, Charlotte De La Cruz sits in her apartment playing a computer game. The online voice asks her why she plays as the bad guys though. The Brotherhood? They're cool, kind of like Robin Hood. The person she is talking to decides to tell her that it's so cool that she plays video games and they kind of want to meet up with her later, so she signs off. The next day, she heads off to the corporation World Share to interview for a job and she gets shot down. She then heads off to her current job at the Malta Bank where she works as a teller. One of her customers comes in wanting to close her account and use that money to help her daughter who's sick. And it makes her think of how her uncle was in the same situation. Knowing the customer really doesn't have the money and tired of her job, Charlotte transfers a large amount of money from another account and tells her customer to withdraw it right away. Charlotte fully expects to be fired soon, so she heads home to drink away her sorrows. When she opens up the door to her apartment though, there are two people standing there. The man introduces himself as Xavier and the woman introduces herself as Galena, and they are both from a group called the Brotherhood. Charlotte yells, YES! THIS IS WHAT I WANTED! I'm so in. Before they can even say a word, there's a knock at the door. Charlotte cracks the door open, and the man says that he's from WorldShare, and he'd like to talk to her about what happened earlier today. He then asks, is this a bad time? But before Charlotte can even answer, he kicks the door in, showing a group of people with guns. The assassins in the Brotherhood begin fighting off the attacks as Charlotte runs for the balcony, but as she reaches it, a thug grabs her, and she turns around to see a knife thrown into his head. Galena throws another knife, and then begins running towards the balcony and jumping off the ledge. As she lands, Galena tells Charlotte to jump. Charlotte looks back and she's not quite sure if she can make the jump. Xavier tells her, go, you said you wanted in. So she runs for the ledge and she jumps. Later, Charlotte wakes up on a stretcher where Xavier and Galena greet her. Xavier tells her that they are out on the Sultan Sea right now and he introduces Cody, a technician and the man who found her. Xavier explains that the game that she's actually been playing is actually somebody else's genetic memories. The Templars use it to gather data on people and try to locate objects. Charlotte thinks about this and realizes that the whole thing is very weird. But why did the Templars want her anyway? Xavier is unsure, but Cody then shows her the Animus. With this, they can look into her ancestors' memories and try to find out what the Templars were looking for. Xavier tells her that they recovered a message from the Templars about another Brotherhood member that they thought was dead actually being alive, and how he's now promised to tell the Templars about a piece of Eden. But there was another message from Joseph, the very same missing member, and he explained that the whole thing was a setup to draw out a top-ranking Templar and assassinate him. Cody tells Charlotte that her mother's bloodline traces back to the timeline that Joseph was able to visit, the Salem Witch Trials. Charlotte asks if Joseph is actually a traitor, but Xavier says the main goal is to find out if Joseph actually could possibly know anything, so they need her to go back into those memories and find his ancestor and see if that ancestor was linked to the Peace of Eden. That way, they can decide if he's a traitor or not. It doesn't take much more convincing, and Charlotte is off on her first adventure. She goes back to 1692 to relive the memories of her ancestors. Ancestor. As a man, she stands on a roof looking down at the hanging of Bridget Bishop. Charlotte tries to jump down and save her, but she desyncs from the Animus and begins throwing up. Xavier tells her that if she tries to do something that her ancestor didn't do, she'll end up desyncing like that. Xavier then asks how long until she can go back in, which Galena says they should just go kill Joseph for being a traitor and not even bother with this. So as Xavier and Galena begin to argue about what they should do next, Charlotte gets up and she gets back into the Animus. This brings us back to Salem Village and Charlotte's ancestor, Tom Stoddard, whom attracted traveled from London to meet a contact. Two men show up and Tom offers to let them look at the goods that he brought back from China, but he quickly figures out that these aren't his contacts and a fight begins. But just as Tom may have been in over his head, a woman jumps in to help. She gives Tom the password and introduces herself as Jennifer Query. As she begins to tell Tom what an honor it is to work with him, he dismisses her stating that only she should have known those watchwords. She tries to defend herself as Tom is leaving, but when that doesn't work, she tells Tom that she knows what he's looking for and she knows where the piece of Eden is. So he tells her, prove it. 
As Jennifer begins to tell Tom what's going on, Charlotte begins to think to herself that Jennifer must have been the ancestor that Joseph was following. Jennifer goes on to explain that back in January, a girl came down with an illness that the doctors could not explain. She had a seizure, but the other girls began to fake the exact same seizure. And because of this, the church began stating that the illness was caused from the devil. And after a while, everyone started accusing each other of witchcraft. Down on the streets, Jennifer goes on to explain that after those events, that's when the Templars showed up. Tom asks how she knows any of this, and she tells him that she's a nurse. She's been close to the girls that have been taken away, but this is her actual first mission. Before going further, Tom stops her and pushes her against a wall and tells her to be quiet. Two men walk by, Samuel Paris and William Stoughton both Templars. The bald man Samuel accuses those that he thinks of witchcraft and William orders them to be taken away. As they listen, they hear them talk about the bodies from the docks that they just left. But not to worry, the guards will now be double. Tom looks back to complain again that these two men knew about his watchword and asks if she knows where the girls are being kept. Later that night, Jennifer takes Tom to the building and she says that she's been inside but she doesn't know where they all are. Thinking this may be a trap, Tom rappels down and he jumps through the window. A guard sees him and he kicks him through the stair railings. So Tom throws a knife back killing the guard. After Jen Jennifer comes down, her and Tom begin to wonder why this building is so empty, but after remembering something the Templars said about the light illuminating the world, Jennifer throws water onto the fireplace to reveal a hidden passage. Once downstairs, they find where all of the sages are holding everyone. Jennifer wants to free them, but Tom tells her to focus on the mission. Going through the prisoners, Tom finds a little boy, and he asks him if he noticed anything. But the girl next to the little boy tells Tom that the boy's name is David, and he's a mute. The girl then tells Tom that she knows what he's looking for, but she'll only tell him where it is if he frees her. Tom isn't sure about that one, but then then she says that it's a piece of Eden. He asks her name and she tells him it's Dorothy. So Tom frees her and David and the four of them begin to move further into the basement. Upstairs, Samuel and William find the guard's body and they begin to talk about what they should do next. Samuel knows that Tom is a legend in the Brotherhood and it's best to just let him do his job and then have other things go wrong for him. So Samuel walks outside to an angry mob and tells them that the devil is here, beneath them at this moment. Back downstairs, Dorothy leads Tom to what appears to be a dead end. And Tom begins to threaten Dorothy that if she doesn't tell him where the piece of Eden is, but before he can finish his sentence, villagers begin to close in around them. However, back in the present day, Charlotte is having issues maintaining a stable connection to the Animus because of Tom's actions. She's disgusted with how mean and downright evil Tom is turning out to be. The group begins to argue if Charlotte can handle this, but she insists and she goes back in to become Tom once again. David throws himself on Tom, but Tom just throws him off into a wall. Dorothy then tells Tom that she will show him what he seeks. Just as Tom is about to call her a liar, Dorothy leans back and her eyes turn white. Dorothy then tells Tom the last words his father told him before he died. Tom finally realizes the truth. They found the piece of Eden. It's the girl herself. He readies himself as the villagers make their way in and they quickly pin him down, but after subduing the attacker, Tom calls out to Jennifer to look for an exit. Jennifer starts looking for that exit and Tom continues fighting off the rest of the villagers when David actually pulls Jennifer over to look at something. But then Jennifer notices Dorothy's hair is blowing in the wind. So she walks over, bringing David with her and checks that spot. What she finds is a false wall. So Tom sets off a fire in the surrounding area and everyone manages to escape. Once outside, Jennifer is having trouble standing and she still tries to help David, but then ends up falling over, dropping David. Tom tries to give a feather to David, telling him to seek out a man named Arbor. But Jennifer yells at him for trying to leave David. Tom explains that David will only slow them down, and that's when they all hear a loud bang. Looking behind them, they see the angry mob continuing to chase them down. David falls back down, so Jennifer tries to help him up, and Tom insists that David is not the mission. They need to go! She refuses to leave David, but before she can get him back up, Jennifer is shot in the side. Tom grabs Dorothy, and he looks at David and Jennifer, but decides to stay true to his mission and leaves them behind. After getting far enough ahead, Tom looks down at Dorothy to see her eyes changing white again. Dorothy tells Tom that his father would have been disappointed to see him abandon his family, to which Tom tells her that he has no family. And then Tom asks, just who are you? Dorothy responds that she is known by many names, but today call her Consus. However, she is here to speak with the woman who's with Tom, but the one that's not here. Charlotte realizes that Consus is talking to her, and Consus continues to tell her that she needs to find the ones with great knowledge before Dorothy returns to normal. Dorothy asks where David and Jennifer went, but she knew the truth. She knew that Tom left them behind. Back in the present day, Cody runs in to tell Xavier and Galena that currently there is a high-ranking Templar officer named Hawking going to the building where Joseph is supposedly being kept, and he's a man who can hack into the Animus and into the actual users themselves. Galena says it's time to move and she wakes up Charlotte, but just as Xavier and Galena argue about staying or going, Cody tells them that he has set up the Animus to be used in a van, so they can do both. They can leave and continue going into the memories. Charlotte goes back into the Animus while in the van, and she sees Tom scouting out the boat that they can use to escape when suddenly he hears a snap. Looking back, he sees Jennifer, and she tells him how she did what she had to do and she left the boy behind. But she will never forgive Tom for making her do it. Tom tells her that she made a mistake, and then he accuses her of betraying him. The real contact would not have survived that 
shot. As Tom begins to confront Jennifer, Dorothy tries to stop him, but he throws her off. And then a rope wraps around Tom's neck. Samuel is standing there and he tells Tom that Jennifer isn't working with him. He just allowed her to leave so that he could follow her back. Samuel takes them all back to the basement they originally escaped from, and then he torches Tom to try and find out which of these children have special powers. When Tom doesn't answer him, Samuel turns to the kids to torture them, and Jennifer quickly yells that she will tell Samuel everything. The guard cuts down Jennifer, and Samuel tells her that if he doesn't get the answers he wants, he'll burn the boy. As Dorothy lays there, Constance begins to speak through her again, speaking to Charlotte. The woman does not provide the answers that they seek. Only in the Devil's Book shall you find your answers. Jennifer uses this brief chance to strangle the guard and free herself and Tom. But as Jennifer runs to David, she's shot by Samuel. Charlotte thinks that if Jennifer's dead, then there's no way that Jennifer knew where the piece of Eden was hidden, and therefore the mission's done, right? So she wakes back up to tell them that Joseph is telling the truth. His ancestor died, so there's no way that he knows anything about that piece of Eden. The group arrives at their destination to rescue Joseph, and Xavier and Galena lead, telling Charlotte to stay put. She's not really an assassin yet. After they take off, Charlotte begins to think about how this doesn't seem right, and then she remembers what Constance said. Said. The answer is in the devil's book, not the woman. That's when she figures it out. It was in the book that Tom carries with him. Charlotte jumps back into the Animus to go back to the time when Tom fights against Samuel. After knocking Samuel down, Tom runs to free Dorothy, but he was shot in the shoulder by Samuel. Samuel then talks about how he will use Dorothy to turn the other girls in the cells into oracles, as William says that he will be creating horrors. But with the guilt of what has happened and what will happen, Dorothy throws herself into the fire. Samuel then begins to choke Tom, telling him that it's all his fault, and William walks up behind Samuel, and as Samuel tells him excellent timing, William shoots him in the back and then points it at Tom. Tom recites a part of Dante's book telling him that the hottest parts of hell are saved for those in moral crisis. Maintain neutrality, which impresses William. So Tom asks to further impress him and allow him to take David and honor the girl's deaths. Outside, Tom finishes burying the graves for Jennifer and Dorothy, and then he looks down at his book, and then he asks if the boy knows how to read. When he gets no response, he tells him that he will teach him how, and he gives David his book, and the two of them walk off, and that's when Charlotte realizes something. David is actually Jennifer's son. They've been following the wrong ancestor. Charlotte realizes that Joseph has has been working with the Templars, and Xavier and Galena are walking into a trap. Cody helps Charlotte get ready to sneak in so that she can rescue them, and that's when Cody gives her the famous assassin's hoodie. After getting inside, Charlotte tricks one of the workers there to let her into the room so that she can sneak into the ventilation. But after letting her in, the worker starts to suspect something, so Charlotte knees him in the stomach and then ties him up. Upstairs, Joseph tells Hawking that he will show him where the remains of the girls are, as long as he gets his revenge on Xavier. Joseph then goes on to tell him that he will also deliver a bonus. Hawking will have Charlotte as well. She's here. To make the hostage this situation seem more real, Hawking punches Joseph, knocking out two teeth that Joseph tosses into the trash. Xavier and Galena make it into the holding cell where Joseph is supposedly being kept, but as soon as they go to free him, he throws them back out the door. Galena goes in to kick him, but Joseph wraps his chains around her leg and snaps it, and then tosses her aside. Before he can kill her though, Xavier knocks Joseph and himself into a pool. While underwater, Joseph manages to wrap the chains around Xavier's neck, suffocating him. Joseph gets out and comes back to finish Galena, but Charlotte comes in with a flying kick. However, Joseph easily just tosses her into a wall. Even with the bleeding effect from the Animus and the skills that she learned from her ancestor, she still can't fight against him. Joseph then goes on to tell them that he turned because Xavier hid the fact that the man that Joseph was in love with is in danger, and because of that, Xavier left him to die so that they could accomplish their mission. Back upstairs with Hawking, those teeth that Joseph spit out were actually bombs, and they just went off. Distracted by the siren, Charlotte makes her move on Joseph, and that's when he picks Charlotte up and she pulls out a knife on him and slashes his chest. But before anyone else can do anything, the Templars come running in, opening fire on them all. Charlotte manages to get into the vents with Galena, and they return back to where Charlotte first entered and knocked out the man. As she looks down prepared to untie him, she notices an emergency bracelet. He has asthma and he couldn't get his puffer. She just killed him. Cody meets them all outside, and they escape in the van to make their getaway. And Galena tells them that they need to contact Gavin to let them know about Joseph giving the Templars information on Salem. But Charlotte stops her. She tells her that Joseph didn't tell him. She knows it. Cody tries to tell Charlotte that Xavier's death wasn't her fault, but ultimately, she's upset that she killed someone because she just didn't know how to tie someone up properly. As she begins to figure all of this out, Galena tells Charlotte that everything she's feeling, the loss, the anger, it means that she's becoming a true assassin. Charlotte looks down at the hoodie that she's holding, and she says, amazing. And then she thinks about how happy she is right now. I hope you guys enjoyed that, and if you did, give this video a like so that we know that you do like video game comic books that are good with a very deep plot. That includes things like the Arkham Knight Origins, Arkham Knight Backstories, Tomb Raider, Dishonored, this one right here, yeah! Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at ComicStory, and I'll see you next time right here.